Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to prevent duplicate products or services from being added to an order in your Microsoft Access databases. We're going to use something called a composite key to prevent duplicates. Today's question comes from Ramiro in Houston, Texas, one of my Platinum members. Ramiro says, I run an auto detail shop. My database is pretty simple. We have about 10 services that we provide. The problem is that sometimes one of my guys accidentally adds the same service twice, which should never happen. Is there a way to prevent this in the database? Well, of course, Ramiro, there's always a way to do pretty much everything in Microsoft Access. The question is, how difficult is it? Now, there's an easy way to do this, and there's a more difficult way to do this. The easy way, which I'm going to show you in this video, requires no programming. There is a better way to do it that does involve some VBA, and I'll show that in the extended cut for, for you members. But let me show you the simple way first. Before we do that, though, prerequisite, if you haven't watched my invoicing database video, go watch that first. All right, I'll show you how to set up the customers, the orders, all that stuff. We're going to use that database in this video. So if you haven't watched this, go watch it now. You'll find a link down below in the link section in the description below the video. It's a free video. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. Go watch that now. Go watch it first. Go on. Get out of here. Okay, so here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. Now, in this database, we have a customer form. We have an order form with an order detail form. This is the simple version. And for this, all you have to do is come in here and type in what you want to add to the order. All right, a TV and it costs $500. All right, there's no picking a product or a service from a list. I do build that in the extended cut video for the members. However, we're going to change this one just slightly so you can still pick items from a list in here. There's a slightly different method I'm going to show you. If you look at our order detail table, we just have a product name in here. We're going to replace that with a product ID. We'll pick it from a list. Ready? So let's go to create. Table design, we'll make a product table, right? Product ID, that'll be our auto number, and then a product name, and that'll be text. You could put pricing and all that information in here, pick from a list, and it adds it automatically to the invoice for you. That's all covered in the extended cut for the invoicing video. This one I'm just going to keep simple to show you how to prevent the duplicates, okay? Can't teach you everything in one video. All right, so we're going to save this. This will be my product T, product table. We'll find the primary key, sure. And we'll put a few things in here. Okay. We'll put in here. You can use products or services, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Let's say we've got, uh, we got triple bait. We've got a photon torpedo. We've got a phaser. All right. Just three products. That's all we need. All right. Save changes. Yes. Now in our order details, we're no longer going to be saving that product name in here. So let's get rid of that. Actually, let's delete all these records first. Delete all these records. We're going to start something different. Right-click, Design View. We're going to get rid of the product name. And we're going to store instead the product ID. All right, that's going to be a number of type long integer. That I cover in my relational database video, which is a prerequisite of the invoicing database. So if you watched that one, then you would have watched that one first. Kind of. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got... Order ID, quantity, unit price, notes, and then, of course, the product ID. Now, we're not going to display a product ID in our order. We're going to display the product name. We're going to use a combo box for that. So let's go to our order detail form, which is right down there. Design this guy. We're going to get rid of product name because we're no longer putting the product name in the order details, right? We're going to put a combo box there showing the list of products from our product form. All right. We're going to go with the product T, bring both of those over like that, sort them by product name. That's okay. And again, if you've never made a relational combo box, I got a video for this too. I'll put a link down below in the link section. Next, store that value in the product ID field. Next. And don't worry about the label because we're going to delete it any place. There it goes. Okay. All right. So there we go. That's that. We got to give this combo box a good name. We'll call it product combo. All right. And tab order auto hit. Okay. Save it, close it. Now let's take a look at what we got. Go to orders. And now you can see, we can pick from a list of orders and I got some spacing there. I got to fix All right. Design view. Bring that 
up like that. Okay. There. There's my photon. There's my phaser. There's my triple bait. And of course, you got to put pricing in here yourself. Cover that in the other video. Okay. Now, the problem is, and this is what, what Romero is saying, is that he doesn't want his guys to be able to add the same product on this order twice. They shouldn't be able to come in here and put photon on there again. And if they try to, give them an error message, warn them, yell at them, do something, right? Set red alert. Phaser is just done. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, let's delete these records first of all. Okay. We can do it using something called a composite key. Now, you're familiar if we look at the if we look at the customer T. Let's look at the customer T first. Okay, here's customer T. We've got a customer ID, and that's the primary key. Primary key says this is a unique number, and no two customers can have the same customer ID, right? Down here, indexed, yes, no duplicates. Right? I talk about this in my access beginner level one class when we talk about auto numbers and primary keys. That's to ensure uniqueness. No two customers have the same number. Now, same thing with the product table, right? The product ID is unique. No two products will have the same product ID. Now, you can have something called a composite key. A composite key says, we're gonna take two or more fields and the combination of those cannot be unique. For example, let's take a look at the order detail table. All right, let's go to design view here. Okay, now there's a primary key, which is the order detail ID. That's for each detail item. So each line item has its own unique key, okay? But we don't want to have an order that has the same product on it more than once. So what I want is a key that is unique for those two fields. In other words, no two orders should have the same product ID. Okay, actually I said that wrong. It should be no order should have two of the same product ID on it. <laughs> okay, so order ID and product ID, that combination has to be unique. And here's how we set that up. We go to indexes right up here. Okay, here's the existing indexes in the system. All right, we got an index called order detail ID. We got an index called order ID. Now that's not unique. All right, it's just indexed. All right, this one is the primary key field right here. That is unique, okay? Product ID is also indexed. What does indexing mean? Well, I explained this in my uh, Access Beginner 1 class. Indexing generally just means that Access sets up a separate index table. It's hidden, you don't see it. And it, with that index, Access can quickly look up a data item. Like it can quickly search or sort based on any field you want. You can index pretty much anything you want. You can index last name if you do a lot of searches or sorts based on last name. You can't index certain things like long text fields, but most fields can be indexed, okay? So what we're gonna do is come down here and we're gonna set up our own composite key, our composite index that's based on two fields. First thing is give it a name. See where it says index name? I'm gonna call this order with product. That's the name that I'm creating for this index, okay? So the first field it's based on is order ID. And this is, this is kind of counterintuitive, but you go down a row and you put product ID below it. All right, so these two things are now part of the same index. I don't like this interface. That's how Microsoft set it up. You just have to know how to do it, okay? If this is blank, it assumes it's part of this index. It's kind of silly, but okay. So now come right here, okay? And you'll see down here, you got primary. No, it's not a primary. Unique, yeah, we're gonna set that to yes. Okay, that means every value in this index must be unique. So every combination of those two fields, right, make up that index, and that has to be unique in this table. Okay, save it. If you get an error message at this point, that could be because the data that you have in your table doesn't meet the requirements of that index. You'll have to fix it or delete the data in the index. Okay. All right, save it, close it, come back to your customer form, come back to your orders. Let's put in here a phaser. Let's add a photon torpedo. And let's try to add a phaser again. Now, right now, nothing seems to be wrong because the record is still dirty. See that little pencil there? That means it hasn't been committed to the table yet. Now, as soon as I try to move off of this record by clicking up here or down below it, there's the error message. It says the changes you requested to the table were not successful because they would create duplicate values in the index 
primary key or relationship. Change the data in the field of fields that contain duplicate data, remove the index, or redefine the index to prevent duplicate data. <laughs> this is the reason why I sometimes don't like using composite keys because there's no way to change this error message. And your user's gonna look at it and go, huh? Okay, you'll just have to train them and say, no, you can't do that. You can't add the phaser again there twice. They'll have to hit escape and get rid of it. But it prevents the duplicate data from getting added to the table, which is what you want in the first place. Now, if you want a more friendly error message, then you'll have to handle that your own with a little VBA, which is what I'm going to cover in the extended cut for the members. We're not going to use a composite key because A, I want to give the user a more friendly error message or warning message, and B, sometimes there's a case where you want to allow the user to add that duplicate service or duplicate product. You might want to say, hey, warning, you know, the phaser's already in this order. Are you sure you want to add it again, but still give the user the ability to add it? So I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. If you want to learn more about setting up an order entry system, my Access Expert Level 8 class covers all this kind of different stuff. Setting up an order entry system, all right? Putting your products in, quantities, all that stuff, sales tax. And in Expert Level 23, I cover a lot more with composite keys. I'll put links to both of these in the description down below. If you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, I'll show you how to do the same thing without a composite key. The benefit is that you can give the user the option to add it again or not. You can say, hey, this product is already on this order. Are you sure you want to add it a second time? That's up to you if you want to allow them to do that or not. Okay, that's a business decision. I just show you how to do it, okay? It'll require a little bit of VBA, not much, a couple lines of code. We'll use the members-only database, of course, so it's got the built-in products already where you can pick a product, hit add, it puts it up top with the pricing and all that stuff in there. Uh, a little bit of VBA, little decount, a custom warning message, and that's all covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's like 230 of them, I think, now. And, of course, gold members can download these databases. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1.
Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.